Senegal's Historic Breakthrough. The Journey to Independence on August 20, 1960. On August 20, 1960, the people of Senegal witnessed a monumental moment in their nation's history. It was on this day that the National Assembly of Senegal proclaimed the country's formal independence, signaling its withdrawal from the short-lived Mali Federation. This pivotal event marked the birth of Senegal as a sovereign nation, concluding a long struggle for self-determination and heralding a new chapter in West African history. The path to this momentous day was neither straightforward nor simple. Senegal had been under French colonial rule since the 19th century, and the journey toward independence was marked by decades of resistance, political negotiation, and the rise of nationalist movements across Africa. The seeds of change had been planted in the years following World War II, as the winds of decolonization swept through the continent, leading to the emergence of leaders and movements demanding freedom from European rule. In January 1959, Senegal and the Sudanese Republic, now Mali, united to form the Mali Federation, a bold attempt at creating a new political entity that would stand strong against the challenges of post-colonial Africa. The federation, however, was fraught with internal disagreements and divergent visions for the future. The leaders of the two countries, Leopold Seder Senghor of Senegal and Modi Keita of the Sudanese Republic, had different ideas on how the federation should be governed, leading to tensions that would eventually tear the union apart. The months leading up to August 1960 were marked by growing friction within the Mali Federation. While both nations shared a common goal of independence from France, their visions for how to achieve and maintain it diverged significantly. Senghor, a poet and intellectual who would later become Senegal's first president, believed in a more gradual approach to independence, one that involved maintaining close ties with France and building a strong, centralized state. On the other hand, Keita was more radical in his approach, favoring immediate and total severance from colonial powers and the establishment of a socialist state. As these ideological differences deepened, the unity of the Mali Federation became increasingly untenable. Senegal's leaders grew concerned that the centralization efforts favored by Keita would marginalize their country within the federation. By August 1960, it became clear that a peaceful and amicable separation was the only viable solution to prevent further discord. On the morning of August 20, 1960, the National Assembly of Senegal convened in Dakar, the nation's capital. It was here, in a session filled with anticipation and emotion, that Senegal's representatives made the historic decision to withdraw from the Mali Federation and declare their nation's independence. The Assembly's proclamation was met with widespread jubilation across Senegal, as people took to the streets to celebrate their newfound sovereignty. Leopold Seder Senghor, who had been a driving force behind Senegal's push for autonomy, addressed the nation with a message of hope and unity. He emphasized the importance of building a stable, prosperous, and inclusive Senegal, one that would serve as a beacon of democracy and development in West Africa. Senghor's words resonated deeply with the Senegalese people, who were eager to chart their own path after years of colonial rule and the uncertainty of the federation. The significance of August 20, 1960, was not lost on the international community. Senegal's peaceful and orderly transition to independence was seen as a model for other African nations striving to break free from colonialism. The country's withdrawal from the Mali Federation was a decisive step in the broader context of decolonization, demonstrating that African nations could determine their own destinies and resolve internal conflicts without resorting to violence. In the days and weeks that followed, Senegal began the challenging task of nation building. The new government faced numerous hurdles, including the need to establish effective institutions, promote economic development, and unify a diverse population. Senghor, who was elected as Senegal's first president later that year, played a central role in guiding the young nation through these early years, balancing the demands of modernization with the preservation of Senegal's rich cultural heritage. The decision to part ways with the Mali Federation did not sever the ties between Senegal and its former partner. Instead, the two nations maintained diplomatic relations, recognizing the mutual respect that had allowed them to peacefully dissolve their union. 
The experience of the Federation, though brief, had taught both countries valuable lessons about the complexities of post-colonial governance and the importance of pursuing paths that align with the aspirations of their people. As Senegal moved forward, August 20, 1960, became a day of national pride, commemorated each year as a reminder of the country's hard-won independence and the courage of its leaders. The legacy of that day is still felt today, as Senegal continues to uphold the principles of democracy, peace, and unity that were championed at its birth. The proclamation of independence on August 20, 1960, was more than just a political act, it was the culmination of a collective struggle for freedom and self-determination. For the people of Senegal, it was the beginning of a new era, one in which they could finally take control of their own destiny and build a nation that reflected their hopes, dreams, and values.